Let's refresh our memories. We have nine people. Right? And what we wanted to do was we wanted to sort them into these spots. Two teams of four and NumPy. Okay? We looked at this without restrictions, and that was not too complicated. We're introducing this whole NCK notation in the context of uh, arrangements rather than binomial expansions. Okay. And then we came to this particular restriction. If two people, two particular people cannot be on the same team, okay? How many different combinations are possible? Okay. Now, just to refresh your memory, here's how we how we started to approach it. Okay. We said, look, these two guys who don't like each other or they're too good to put on the same team, okay, we'll put them on different teams. So here's one, and here's the other. Okay. So now I've got less spaces to fill, and I have less objects with which to fill them. Okay. So do you remember what we did at this point? You can do this in any order you like. Okay. You can say, all right. I've got three spots to fill here, and how many people can I choose from? I had nine to start with, I've taken out those two, that gives me seven to choose from. So I can say seven, C3, that gives me the first team. And then what happened? To fill the next team? Four, choose three again, right? And then you've got the loner who ends up umpiring. One, choose one, okay? Now do you remember what number we got for that? 140? Okay. Right, now, the first thing I labor the point of was that this is a different scenario to what we did with no restrictions, okay? Do you remember when we had no restrictions, we overcounted. We overcounted because I might give you, say, you know, guy one, number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I'd say, look, there's one permutation, okay, sorry, one combination. But if I switch these guys around exactly like so, right? This is still the same two teams, okay? So we had overcounted in the previous situation by a factor of two. Two factorial, actually, okay? Now, do you remember? Why am I not in that position here? You should not divide by two having done this. What's different? What's different? You can see it there in its own color, okay? What was different in this situation? Because there were restrictions I had to deal with, okay? I placed these people on teams and I locked them into place, okay? So now these teams are set. I'm not switching them anymore, okay? Now just suppose, just suppose you say, wait, wait, you can switch them, you know? Um, these two guys, let's call them, you know, uh, I don't know, Elliot and Jungu, some random names like that, okay? If I did switch them, <laughs> Then I have, I have two more ways, I've got double the number of ways to do these teams. So then sure, you multiply by two. But if you want to consider that as a scenario, now I'm back in the position I was before, where I've given you twice as many arrangements as I should. So then you should divide by two, right? So it doesn't have an effect. The way I always think about it is, if you're overcounting because things can interchange, okay? When you lock things in place, they're not interchangeable anymore. So that's why you're not overcounting. Okay. As it happens, in fact, we have undercounted. Okay. We are missing ways of arranging these teams. Okay. Now, no one worked it out yet. I want you to come back with me to the question. Read it very carefully. We do this over and over again. What are we missing? It's there in the question. Read it with me. If two particular people cannot be on the same team, how many different combinations are possible? Two particular people cannot be on the same team. Let me just write that down. Two people not on the same team. Okay? Now, what I've done, what I've done is I've put the two people on two teams, right? Two people on two teams. Two people on two teams. Now herein lies the problem, which no one has spotted yet, okay? These two things, these two things, they're not the same. They're not the same. If I want them not to be on the same team, there is another way to not have them on the same team, right? than to have them on two different teams. 
Do you see? This is why I keep on writing this, even though you're like, why do you write that? Why do you write that? It doesn't make a difference. Well, actually it does. Because if I want these two guys to not be on the same team, there's another way to do it. There's another way. I can have one as an umpire and one on a team. Now they're not on the same team, right? You happy with that? I've separated them out. That's all I needed to do. Okay, that's why I picked out this example because this guy over here, he looks so insignificant, right? And that's why we even don't write this all the time. Right? I mark um, people who do this and they're like, I've done this, I've done this, now no more choices. Okay, one of the reasons why I personally, when I'm doing these questions, it took me years to work this out, right? To make sure I don't miss anything, you write even the things that seem obvious, okay? Because they'll help you spot the things that are not so obvious, okay? So really what this is, is this is case one, okay? Case one is two people on two different teams, okay? So now I'll do case two. Case two is that I'll make one the umpire and I'll make the other one on one of the teams, okay? Does that make sense? Now, you can think through it, okay? If I make one the umpire, I'm gonna draw my boxes again, okay? Uh, I'm going to lock him in. So here he is. Done. Okay. Now, think about that other important player, the asterisk player. Okay. How many places can I put him? Okay. Now, in terms of teams, I can put him in two different teams. I can put him in either team. Or in terms of spots, I can put him in eight spots. The point is, now that I've got this guy away from the other guy, there are actually no more restrictions on how I place, right? Because I've already satisfied this. It's done, okay? So I don't need another asterisk on my, on my arrangement to account for the restriction. Automatically, they are on different teams now. So now I proceed. Team A, I've got four slots to fill. How many people can I fill it with? Eight, I have eight left. I had nine and I took off one, right? So now I've got eight, choose four. Okay, is that all right? And then I have to fill team B, right? Which is, well, I've got four people left, and I'm gonna choose four of them. By the way, what's four choose four? One, because, well, I've got nowhere else to put them, do I? Okay, and you can work this out. I'm pretty sure it's 70 ways. Okay, eight choose four, I think it's 70. You can even think of that row in um, Pascal's triangle, okay? So therefore, your total number of ways arranging to meet this condition is case one plus case two, the total is 210 minutes. Okay, happy with that? Hmm. By the way, one last thing. Um, not that it's that important, but just so you know, uh, you probably already appreciate the fact that there's always lots of different ways to do questions, right? Just have a look at this line, the one we established yesterday, okay? Um, I went from left to right, from left to right, and um, I left the, um, the umpire as the poor, unprivileged person, right? But it doesn't necessarily have to be. Maybe you think actually picking out the umpire is the most important rather than the least important. So then how would I rewrite it? I would say, okay, first I need to put someone in the umpire's spot, right, for this case. So I would say, how many do I have to choose from? Oh, hold on, hold on. I've already placed a restriction on this. Right? I've placed a restriction. So it's seven. It's seven, choose one, right? And then I'll go over to this team. How many do I have left? I've got six and I've got to choose three, right? And now this team over here, it becomes the I've got no more choices option. It becomes three, choose three, which is just one, right? And then you get your calculator and you say, well, what is, oh, here it is, out, oh, okay? Are uh, you? You can probably already anticipate what seven choose one is going to be. It's just seven, right? So then you go, well, what's six choose three? And you're like, oh, oh, it's 20, right? It's still 140 ways. It's the same situation. You just looked at it from a different angle, okay?